Hey guys, let me tell you about box prices and why investing in boxes is just such a bad idea right now. I know a lot of you want to do it because you've seen older boxes just skyrocket in price. Right? If you look at a box of original Zendikar, that's a very pricey box. If you look at a box of Beta, I mean looking in tens of thousands of dollars at that point. But that's not where we are today. So the key here is things have changed from RTR. Even Innistrad boxes and Avacyn Restore boxes, they do pretty good in terms of value. I will be making another video telling you why you cannot sell boxes. You are not Rudy from Alpha Investments. You do not have the distribution. You do not have the subscriber base. You do not have the monthly payments he's receiving. You don't have any of that. So for a regular person to sell a booster box at $100, not feasible. Like unstable, selling unstable for $110 or $100, that is insane. Let's say you buy it from Rudy for $80 and then you pay $10 for, um, you know, the Patreon or something. Let's say you buy a case and let's say, let's just take $2 from the $10 because you have to add that. That is an additional expense. So you paid $82 for a box of unstable. Well, paying shipping, you're paying at least $6 shipping, if not more, you're using your time. So let's throw in minimal wage for an hour for you to pack it, ship it, take it to post office, assuming you don't do enough volume that they would come up. Maybe they will come and pick it up. I'm not sure how that works, but let's assume for your own time that you get paid like a Walmart employee. You get paid $8 an hour, so it took half an hour. So let's add another $4, add six for shipping. That's another $10 on it. So that is $92. So for it to hit $100, for you to be able to sell it for $100 in unstable box, you'd only make $8. Uh-huh, but what if there were fees? TCG player fees, I think it's like seven and a half, something kind of crazy like that, eBay fees. You're looking at another 10% or another, let's just round it to $9. So you're looking at $101. So you would lose money on $100 box. You lose money buying, from, buying at 80, because you're not actually paying 80, let's say you pay 82, and that's assuming you bought a whole case. You have to pay shipping, you have to pay for your own time, you have to pay eBay fees, PayPal fees, and or TCG player fees, depending on how you're selling it. I'm here to tell you, none of you are gonna make any money because you're competing and it's mass drop. You know, is it beyond mass drop to have like an epic sale on unstable boxes like a year from now? No. That happens all the time. And gate crash, I know this is a French gate crash, but for the people in France, I guess this is not bad. There's free shipping on this one too. So if you buy, if 10 people buy it, or 10 boxes are purchased, it gets down to $55.49. I can tell you that's not the lowest price I've seen gate crash at. I've seen Chinese gate crash uh, at below 50. I saw it at 49.99 eBay one day. I'm thinking about buying it. And then with an eBay coupon, so sometimes they give you a coupon, it's like $15 off if you spend $50 or $100. So you could, I, could, I was looking at that box and if it was $50, I could have used my $15 coupon and paid $35 for a gate crash box in Chinese. But since it was $49.99, I would still have to buy something and I was looking to buy something else and I couldn't make work. The deal wasn't optimal. That being said, Holy blank, like $55 a box, and you can buy as many of these as you want? Mmm, Gate Crash is not a bad set. If I compare Gate Crash to, let's say, Hour of Devastation, I love Gate Crash over Hour of Devastation because you have five Shocklands. What does Hour have? It has Scarab God and Mythic, and that's it. Well, Gate Crash has five rare Shocklands. I, I mean, yes. I would much rather have five rare shock lands than a mythic. One mythic worth over ten dollars. Every other card, including Nicoboas, is under ten dollars. And Nicoboas is another mythic, right? And he's in standard. What if Hour of Devastation rotates out of standard and Scarab God sees no play at all in modern, which is a possibility, or sees less play in modern? Yeah, you're looking at a really awful set, right? At least Voice of Resurgence, you knew would see some modern playability. 
But scare of God, I cannot guarantee you. I mean, it's, it costs a lot for modern. So my point being, you do not have the same distribution network. You do not have the same mechanics or subscribers or fans that Rudy has. So for you to mimic him is insane. Like you, you cannot, you cannot, you buy a box for 82, uh, unstable for it to hit a hundred, you need a miracle. And let, even if you hit a hundred, you're losing money. You lose a dollar. Every time you sell a box, you lose a dollar because you have to calculate your own time, which I've calculated as half an hour of a minimal worker at or minimal paid worker at Walmart. And you have to calculate shipping and uh, fees and all of that stuff, right? So at the end of the day, at the very end of the day, $55 a box, I could I see a France unstable box a few years from now at $55? Yes, I could see that all day because there's no, the only tournament legal cards in, that, in this set is, guess what? The lands. And I know people are getting hyped on lands, but what you need to know about unglued and unhinged is it was so bad, they had to destroy product. They had to destroy product. And the saving grace is not the print run, not that, oh, it's gonna have a very limited print run. No one wants full art lands anymore. Correct me if I'm wrong. The last few sets we have been inundated with full art lands. The promos we've been inundated with full art lands. The expeditions we've been inundated with full art lands. They're not special anymore. The whole point of the unhinged, unglued was they were the only ones at the time. And it was kind of pimp to play. No one is no one is thinking, oh my gosh, these are the most pimp lands I can have. Nah, no, no. <laughs> Look what's out there. Look what's out there, like in terms of lands. Like it's insane how many four out lands have been printed in the fat past few years. And then what's the other cards of unglued? I mean, yeah, they're funny, but I can tell you funny cards are very hard to move. They're not liquid at all. Like maybe there's one or two cards like Mox Lotus is a very beautiful card in my opinion, and it's very good. Uh, the Jack and the Mox and the Black and Lotus, I, the BFM, I, I like those cards because people look at them and they attract people to your trade binder, but they don't have any purpose. No one's going to trade for them, right? Like people need standard cards and need cards you can play with. Like it's a luxury to trade for un unhinged and unglued card you do not need because you're trading value, probably standard value, but nonetheless standard value into something that you cannot play. You, you can't even play in EDH unless your play group is willing to allow you to do, do that, but you couldn't get a bunch of strangers, play your Mox Lotus, they would like, be like, whoa, hold on, stop. Get that out of here, get out of here, you casual player. And it's very funny because it's an EDH group, right? Criticizing people for being too casual. Anyway, my point being, my gosh, don't invest in unstable, please. Please do not invest in unstable. Even five years from now, if magic is still paper-based, which I assume it's not, like I have this random belief, uh, given I play a lot of mobile games, you know I spend money on mobile games, I spend you know $500 a month on mobile games because A, I can, and B, it's what I play mostly. If Magic Gathering made a good mobile game, I would quit the card game, I would sell out every single card game card I have, including my Falias, and I would just play a mobile game because I can take my phone anywhere, right? I can play anywhere I want. I can take my iPad. I, I hope the mobile game would be available for Apple products. Like, it would be a shame if it was not. But at the same time, I assume that, like, Magic Duels it will. I would be shocked, just amazed if people were still playing the card uh, paper card game or the same amount of people playing the paper card game when there would be a better mobile game. Because the thing with the mobile game is your whole collection is on your phone. That is very appealing to me, someone who has half a million cards, right? I like that in my games. I like that my Fire Emblem characters, I, I have two accounts, I'm not gonna get into that, but I like that, you know, I purchase the characters or I gamble for the characters. I have them, they're on my phone. I can have access to them anytime I like. I also play 
Uh, Pokemon Go still. I know no one plays that game anymore, but I still like it. I use it as a walking pedometer for my dogs when I walk my dogs. You see how far I've walked? Walked. I normally walk a 5K egg and then I go home. So I also play. Uh, I play this other game, Fate Grand Order. And I spend, you know, between Fate Grand Order, I don't actually spend money on Pokemon Go. Maybe like I will like today because it's Thanksgiving event and double XP, which is nice. But uh, I normally don't spend money on Pokemon Go, but I do spend quite a bit on Fire Emblem. And if Wizards of Coast made something, yeah, I would give them a big chunk of my mobile budget. Like I would be like, all right, you guys did a good job. Here's some money. And I would liquidate all my paper. I will honestly tell you that when you have a large collection like me, it's very burdensome to have to carry that, like, or not even carry, like, to move it from place to place, storage unit to your home, back to storage unit. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.